Hi, health teachers. I'm excited to share this beginning of the school year activity called Shelter from the Storm. It's a great activity to use with your high school health classes to introduce the concepts of adolescent risk behavior and health skills. So this activity takes a little bit of prep. I want you to think about preparing an experiment for your students. So it is gonna take a little prep work, but once you've done it once, you can store it away and use it year after year. Now, if you get the lesson from Health at School, a lot of the work will be done for you, but there's definitely still some assembly. So you're going to be dividing your class into an equal number of teams. You'll have one set of teams that are acting as fillers, and they'll be competing against a set of teams that are acting as builders. In my class, I usually have six groups. So three groups are fillers and three groups are builders. For the fillers, you're going to use the printable labels from the lesson to label six cups for each group with adolescent risk behaviors. The labels are easy to attach. I just use packaging tape and attach it to plastic cups so I can use it year after year. In addition to those cups, I give each group about 32 ounces of water, depending upon the size of your cup, and a towel just in case. For the builders, you're going to print the skill cards. You'll cut them and fold them as seen in the picture here and laminate them so that they can be waterproofed. If you're a parent, you probably have Legos everywhere and you can grab one of your kiddos little Lego minifigures. If not, you can use the printable minifigures you get in the set and laminate those as well. In addition to the skill cards and the minifigures, the builders are going to get a larger basin to build their structure in. And I give them a smaller Tupperware container that contains all of these behavior cards, um, I'm sorry, these skill cards and the minifigure. So as students come in, they'll be assigned groups, either fillers or builders. And then they get started on their task. So the builder's job is to protect that little minifigure. And the building blocks they have are health skills. So on each of these red cards is a different health skill, many of which are taken from our national health education standards. What you see on the screen is one successful build. There's eight total cards. This group used four cards to form the bottom or base of a structure for their minifigure, creating a floor and walls. And then they used an additional four skill cards to kind of wrap those walls and secure the minifigure figure. They were pretty crafty. They put their structure inside the basin, which you want everyone to do. That's your catch basin for the water. And then they took the container that had all the materials and they flipped it over and they used that to secure a roof on top of their shelter. Now, while your builders are figuring out how they're going to build the best structure and shelter for their minifigure, your fillers are considering the risk behaviors that are labeled on each cup. Now their job is to fill each cup with an amount of water that represents how prevalent they believe that behavior to be. So if they're looking at the cup that says alcohol and drug use, they wanna fill that cup as much or as little as they think represents the percent of high school students who engage in that behavior, who use alcohol and drugs. Now, if your students are like mine, they are going to overestimate greatly the percentage of students who use alcohol and drugs. Most of the time, this cup is the one that is most filled or most full. Once they've finished filling their cups and the builders have finished building their structure, we get ready for the storm. So, um, you'll have two teams work together, one team of fillers and one team of builders. I like to process this as a whole group. So as my fillers get ready, I ask them to take, for example, the cup that's labeled alcohol and drug use. And before they start raining down on the shelter, I ask them what percentage of high school students they thought used. Sometimes I average the guesses from the three different groups, and then I let them go ahead and create that storm over the shelter. Now, after they've poured the water onto the shelter, I share a slide, which is included in the lesson as well, that tells them what the youth risk behavior says, survey says. So in this case, the most recent data from the YRBS tells us that less than 15% of students have ever in their lifetime used select illicit drugs like cocaine inhalants, 
heroin, methamphetamines, ecstasy, hallucinogens. Now, students generally respond by saying, yeah, but a lot more kids use alcohol. And that's true, but it's still less than what they guess. So in the lesson itself, I share other data that you can use with your students. For example, only 30% of high school students report having used alcohol in the last 30 days, and it's only 20% that report having used marijuana in the last 30 days. My students are usually guessing that 70% of kids are using. So this is also a great way to correct normative beliefs. You go through the same process with each cup representing each adolescent risk behavior. And then the big reveal, how did that minifig do? Did the minifigure stay dry? Did the minifigure get wet? How did the structure hold up? Then we can get to processing the activity and really pulling the lesson from the activity. So we can talk to students about how did those skills protect the minifigure? How do those skills protect you and your ability to be happy, healthy, and successful? We can also talk about what happens if we don't have all the skills, right? If we can't combine the skills in the right way, are we as safe? This is a great time to bring up the social determinants of health. One of the skills is accessing valid information. Well, if I live in a place where I don't have access to the internet or I'm not close to health providers, it's gonna be much harder for me to access valid sources of health information and trustworthy healthcare providers. And as such, it's gonna be harder for me to keep myself safe and healthy. So students learn that having these skills, the way we combine and use them, and having access to things, our environment, play a big role in keeping us safe and healthy. Also, we want our students to realize that most of the time, they believe more kids are engaging in risky behaviors than actually are. When the reality shows us that most teens are making healthy choices, that's a great lesson to start right at the beginning of the year and to repeat um, with your students frequently so we can help change those attitudes and normative beliefs. All of this is part of a larger lesson, a whole bundle of activities that you can use in the beginning of your high school health program. There's an activity where students come up with expectations of behaviors that will create a safe learning environment, a great game for getting to know them called I am, I'm not, I know. All of this involves opportunities for movement and technology as well as bonus materials for their families. If you're dealing with some COVID restrictions still at this point, you can still do this activity. So if students need to stay three feet apart, you can still have that building group. One of the students is designated the actual builder while the others can help direct the building. This is also a great opportunity to talk about the importance of effective communication. What helps communicate information well? How do groups work together well? What barriers were there to being successful? Um, so there's a lot of lessons that are inherent in this that you can add in as you go. For this lesson and many others, you can check out my store on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, health at school, and please follow me on Facebook for more updates and new resources, freebies, and excellent information on how to teach a skills-based health program. Have a great day.